Hi guys, Rich from Art of Smart. We're down here in Harpenden at one of our projects. Um, so we didn't actually do the original installation of this property. Um, we took this property over back in March. Um, when we did the original takeover on the job, um, we had to obviously strip it all out, redo everything on the rack there. Um, we have actually done a, a time-lapse video on the takeover and the work that we did here. Um, Rob will put that somewhere on the screen here so you can have a look at that video. So the client used to have a cinema room in the basement and a pool in the basement. Um, so he actually backfilled the pool, knocked the old cinema games room through to one uh, and we upgraded massively his cinema. So we changed it from a drop down screen to a fixed screen. Uh, acoustically transparent screen with the left, centre, right channels and subs behind the screen and installed a Triad Bronze 7.2.4 cinema room down in the basement. It's got a JVC projector that was existing. Um, now, when we did the upgrade, when we do takeovers, we try and make them as cost efficient as possible. Obviously, clients already spent a lot of money. They already spent a lot of money again to get it right. Um, so if we don't have to upgrade a component, we won't. Of course, we'll put in the managed network, the rock solid Wi-Fi. We'll upgrade any pieces of hardware that we need to. Now, the client had an HC800 processor, which if you know the Control 4 processor line, this is a little bit older, um, but it still worked and still worked on Control 4 OS 3. So what we've actually done is left it for a while. Everything was working fine. And then uh, a couple of months ago, we came back and we integrated all the Lutron system. So the client has about 120 loads of Lutron Homeworks QS lighting within the house. We integrated that into the processor, which has slowed it right down. Obviously that's quite a lot of strain with it pulling between lights all the time and getting the light states. So it slowed the process right down to the point where it was taking quite a long time to load the app. So the client came back to me and he said, Rich, is there anything we can do to speed the app up? The app's really slow. It's taking quite a long time to change between sources or uh, to even control the volume through the app. And I said, um, yeah, see you 10 time, baby. So we're back here now, it's just before Christmas. It's like 22nd of December or something. Early Christmas present, we're upgrading the processor, a couple of new remotes. Um, so yeah, let's go in and have a look. So the CA10 processor has four times the processing power of the EF5. It is a lightning fast supercomputer uh, and it makes the Control 4 app, the system and the remote connection just work so, so much faster. On top of that, for those who are sometimes maybe a little bit cautious about what if a smart home goes wrong, which touch wood they don't, um, but it has dual redundant power supplies. So if the power supply fails in it, the other one is going to take over. It has twice as many fans, it has dual SSDs, and the project is basically loaded on two partitions of it, and if for some reason one of those would fail, the other one would kick in. Now, what it does that's even cleverer than that is if any of those fault conditions occur, it's gonna email us and tell us that there's an issue and we could bring an advanced replacement. So I'm connecting onto this app. Now, I've not actually connected onto this for a while, which is why it's taking a little bit of a time to load. But there we go, the app's connected. If I change the room to the cinema room, we've got the sky queue in here and we're pressing the commands. We've got that. Now, if I were to close this app off, and then the app is connected. So now we'll get the CA10 processor out of the box, we'll get it over and into the rack, we'll get this upgraded, and I'll show you how much faster it makes this connection.
Right then, so now we've got the C810 processor in the rack, we can come into control form, connect onto the local system. So there is our current H800. Um, so we've got that and you can also see our C810 processor in there. Now, we want to connect back onto the H800. So we have the project here. So as I mentioned before in the intro, um, we have a decent sized project here. Um, we are added in all the Lutron lighting loads. So this is a Lutron Homeworks QS system. We integrated the Lutron processor, which has brought the speed of it down. So first thing you want to do when we're looking at doing something like this is do a backup. So backup as 12.12 on the 22nd of the 12th, 2020. Yes, we are mad doing a controller migration three days before Christmas. So we'll click save on there. We're going to come through to the next part. We're going to then back up the project. Once the project has been backed up, we can then look at doing the migration and bringing this all up, up together. Now we've done our backup, we can come into the basement and come into our AV rack room, which is a hidden room on the project, um, but we use this to keep everything organized. So we'll come into the Discover tab and we should be able to find there the C810 processor. So we're gonna add the C810 processor into the current project file. It took a couple of seconds. Again, because the H800 is an older processor, so it's a bit slow. Right, so now the CA10 has added itself into the project. It's gonna bring that up there. We can see we've got one of the Ethernet cables online. Uh, we'll put the other one in once we've got it updated. And we can see the status, so drive one, drive two are online. Ethernet one is offline, but that's fine. Ethernet two is online. Two fan circuits are online and the two power circuits are online and we've got temperature. Again, we have the logs and warnings here. So we have complete logs on this processor. First thing I'm going to do is go through into the update manager uh, because there's an update available for the project and we are going to run that update. I'm not going to save a backup because I just have done, so no. And we're going to update this full project so everything is on the same controller version. It's going to do direct first and then all the other devices. Right then, that process has come back online following the update. It's always a little bit touch and go at that moment, but Processor is online, which basically means everything in the project, the touchscreens, the controllers, all the devices are updating onto the latest Control 4 software, which at the time of the video was 3.2.1. So process is back online then, ready to connect, so we're going to connect onto it. Always a little bit touch and go when you're doing an update, <laughs> that it all comes back online nice, but um, that's all coming back on now and we're getting back into the project. It will still have a little bit to finish on the update, but then that'll mean that the new CA10 processor which is just there, and the H800, which we're gonna have running as a slave controller to keep use of the IO, is all gonna be in place. So let's open the update manager, see how it's doing. H800's up to date. I extend this, that one actually really annoys me. Some of me also the IO extend doesn't upgrade above 291. Don't ask me why. Something I need to pick the bones with control for, and everything else is coming online there. Do you can drop that touch screen, please, because it's showing offline. It's gone, it's died. So the CA10 there is just about to finish its update and it's just finished rebooting. And then we have all the touchscreens and the A1s and stuff in the project. They're just coming back online. And then the cinema touchscreen there. Right then, so that is now the project all updated. CA10 is in, everything is on the same processor version. Now it is time to do the controller migration. We're gonna connect on here. So we've got the controller here, we're gonna click start. So what we found on here, the source controller, which is our H800, and then our target controller. So that is a controller that we wanted to take over as what Control 4 referred to as the director. So that is the CA10. The lounge TV and the master bedroom, they're just EA1s. Um, now, we are gonna migrate across the project and the Zigbee server, uh, and then take that across there. So if we click the next, connections migration. Now, if you had any IO on a processor, so i.e. you upgraded from a EA5, uh, from a H800 to an EA5 and you had some infrared connected, some serial connected, or um, the audio output streams, that would be that. Uh, and that would be coming out of an EA series controller, which is entertainment automation controller. But because we're going to a CA10, which is a control automation, um, it has no IO, it's literally just a brain. So the pre-migration backup file, pre-migration, and then we're gonna migrate a migration report. Them file locations are fine. We're gonna click next. 
It's then going to do a second backup, which is fine because we've just updated the OS. So if I open Prozor Pro, it should have enabled directs on the CA10 and the CA10 should be available from the available controllers list. So there the controller there is now running director and what connects until it's finished its migration, but it's uh, sat there waiting to go. And uh, we can connect onto the processor, which as you can see, even just by literally the loading process, it is faster. And there uh, we're straight into the project already, whereas that took about a minute before. So we still have the HG800 in on here. We still have the CA10. Apart from here, now the status lights on everything on the CA10 is happy. Um, you can see there we had an Ethernet fault on it, um, which was cleared at 49. So the reason for that is because it has dual LAN ports, we actually put um, one of the networks directly onto the home network. And then the second one, uh, we put it into the ISP router, um, just so it's got double connection. Um, but the whole project is back online. We're gonna go through and check all the bits around the house now, such as what we've got. We can see there on the network devices, everything there within the network tree is showing us online. And not everything has an IP address. The Zigbee network, we do have a couple of devices offline. Um, that's because that's been removed and that's been removed, but we have two new remotes that are going in today as well. So we'll get that sorted and all those online. One thing that I'm gonna show you with the CA10 is, um, if we come into the device, we have device variables under here. And then we've got everything on here. So, yeah, so we basically have all the fault conditions against the primary and secondary uh, devices. So if I come down into my email notification agent down here, um, we've got a support email on the project. So I'm just gonna come back against every fault condition and add this in. And then basically we don't need to report what the actual fault condition is and create an alert for every single one, because if we get an alert, we can log remotely into the system and see what's wrong with it. So we tie back all these alerts back against there. And effectively what this is gonna do, it's gonna email a notification to support AOS group if there is an issue with this device. And then we know, um, we're gonna contact the client and have a look and see what's going on. Right then, so we just finished the CA10 upgrade and I'm gonna show you what it was all about. So obviously we saw when we was loading it up before, when it was loaded from the older H800 processor. Now we've got the CA10, as soon as I fire in on that Control 4 logo, half a second, and we're straight in on the app. And then from the app there, if you wanted to come down, turn the screen LED on. Well, let's turn the down lights off in this cinema. Fire up the Apple TV. And we'll come watch a movie. Simple as that.